Hello everyone, welcome to another informational video of ServiceNow. In this video, we will be discussing about G underscore form object, what are its uses, how do we use it, and what are the common use cases. So this is the agenda of this video, introduction, common use cases, what are the methods provided out of the box by G underscore form, and we will be looking at one use case as well. If you want to jump to any of these topics, the links are given in the description. First of all, the introduction. The GlideForm client side API provides methods for managing form and form fields. So, ServiceNow provides an API called GlideForm using which we can manage our form and fields on the form. And to use this API, ServiceNow has provided us with G underscore form object. And using this object, we will be accessing all the methods which are given out of the box. And one thing to note is this object is only available on client side script. So this is really important point. This was the point also discussed in my previous video of G underscore user. The G underscore user object is also available only in the client side scripts. If you want to refer to that video, the link is in the description and on the top right corner as well. These are few common use cases in ServiceNow where we can use G underscore form object. The first one is to retrieve a field value on a form. So you can retrieve the value of any field on the form, maybe on the incident form, on the change form or any other form you have on ServiceNow. You can hide a field on ServiceNow or make it visible as well. Make a field read only write a message on top of the form or on the field as well and then we can add or remove choices from the choice list so these are the few methods which are most commonly used in g underscore form from my experience there are many other available and we will be looking at them as well in this video we will not be looking in depth on all of those but we will be looking in depth into these methods especially because these are most commonly used and they are really critical for your interviews as well so let's quickly start with one of them called set mandatory and as the name suggests this function is used to make a field mandatory or non mandatory on the form so let's see that in service now i am in my service now and i will go to client scripts and I will write a client script on the incident table. For that, I will click on new and I will create a new client script. If you are not familiar about client scripts on ServiceNow, please click on the top right corner and I have an entire client script playlist. So I will name this client script as G underscore form demo and I will select the name as incident. So this is the incident table. I will make the type as onload and I will scroll down and I will make one of the fields mandatory on the incident form. So for example, G underscore form. This is the object which we learned in slide number one. And then I will click on dot and it will present me with all the methods which are available in this object. I will search for set mandatory. And I will make one of the fields mandatory on the form. Maybe assign to field as mandatory. So this accepts a second parameter as well called true. So if you want to set a field mandatory on the form, you will make it as true. And if you want to make it as non-mandatory, keep it as false. And here in the first parameter, you have to give the backend name of the field. And now I will go to the incident form. I haven't saved this client script yet, so it will not work. So right now, if you see the assigned to field is not mandatory here. And if I right click on this, you can see the backend name of this assigned to field. I'll go back to my client script. I will save this. I will click on refresh and as soon as the form loads, it became mandatory. Similarly, you can make a field non mandatory as well. The second one is set visible. This function is used to hide or make a field visible on ServiceNow page. Let's quickly see that as well. So here I am on the incident form and I will try to hide the configuration item field. I'll go back to my client script and I will write here G underscore form dot set visible and I will make the configuration item field as invisible. I will now search the backend name of this configuration item. I'll right click on this and the backend name is CMDB underscore CI. So similar to set mandatory set visible also accepts two parameters. I will give the backend name and then similarly if I want to make a field visible then I'll make it as true otherwise false. So for our use case, I'll make it false and I will save this function again. I will refresh the incident form. 
and if you see the configuration item is visible and now it's invisible as soon as the script ran the next one is set read only so this function is used to make a field read only on the form it also accepts two parameters the backend name of the field and then a boolean value true or false so we will quickly go into service now and we will make this service field as read only so here if you see the backend name is business underscore service and i will try to make this field as read only i will scroll down here i'll go to g underscore form dot set read only the name of the field is business underscore service and then i'll make it as true to make the field as read only and if you want to do it otherwise just make it false i will save this script i'll go to the incident form and refresh this and this service field should become read only after the script ran and here you can see the field is now read only moving on get value so this is used to get the value of a field on the form so let's go to service now again and we will try to get the value of this short description field so the backend name of this field is short underscore description i will go here in the script i will go to g underscore form dot get value and here i would say short underscore description so to show this value we will use an alert so i will write alert here and i will close this and i will save the script again and it should show me the value in the short description which is this is demo 14 as a pop-up i will refresh this and you can see the pop-up says this is demo flow 14 which is the short description so we are able to get the value of this field using get value method next is clear value so this is used to clear a value on the field so for example if somebody has entered some value and you don't want to accept it or when the form is loading you want to clear out all the fields you can use this clear value method we will quickly see this as well now we will try to clear the value of this short description i will go to the script i will type here g underscore form dot clear value and i will have to pass one parameter that is the backend name of the field so short underscore description and i will close this i will save the script and i will go back to the incident form and refresh this and the pop-up would appear and after this the field should clear out and you can see the short description is cleared now so the clear value is used to clear the value of a particular field next is set value so this method is used when you want to set value of a field on the form you can set it to anything you just have to pass again the two parameters here which we will see in a second so what we can do is now as soon as we are clearing the short description we will try to set it as something random so if you go here and then here i would say g underscore form dot set value and here i will pass two parameters the first is the backend name of the field so that is short description and then the second parameter would be this is a g underscore form demo so this is the new text which should be set in the short underscore description field as soon as the value is cleared i have saved the script i will refresh the form a pop-up would come now the short description value should be cleared and the new text should appear here i'll click on ok and you can see the short description has been changed to this is a g underscore form demo so this is how you use set value next two are the most interesting methods add info message and add error message so usually the developers use these methods for logging and testing their scripts so you can use them for that purpose as well and also you can use it to display your messages on the form so for example if you want to display some informational message in blue color so you can use add info message and if you want to show some error you can use add error message so we will see these two functions quickly so what i will do is i will add a info message here on the top so for that i'll go here and i will add g underscore form dot add info message and i will have to pass a string here and i can pass something similar so this is an awesome demo i will close this i will save this now 
and I will refresh this and one informational message should come up on the top and you can see this one as this is an awesome demo if you are using service now since very long you would know this is an informational message which comes on the top in blue color next we will see the error message so i will just say here g underscore form dot add error message and then this is an error message so for example if you want to show an error message on some specific condition the text is not right or maybe if the user selected some incorrect values or anything and you want to show an error message you can use this so you can just put in your conditions in an if block and then show this error message on those conditions so i'll click ok here and you can see this is an error message so this is in pink or red color and this is very bright and the user sees this message that there is some problem on the values which they have set so you can give the values or the fields name here as well on which the error is there so for example if you want to make this error as dynamic you can combine two methods here so to make it more dynamic so for example g underscore form dot get value and then I'll get the value of short description here. So this becomes a dynamic message. I will save this and I'm just doing it for the demo purpose that I can show you how dynamic these are. I'll click on refresh. I will click on OK. And you can see the short description value is showing up here. This is a G underscore form demo. Then you can concatenate the strings as well using the plus sign, maybe plus and maybe error message is here so this is how flexible these methods are you can customize them as per your need and you should be able to achieve your goal so here you can see error messages here so these are the most commonly used methods which are used in g underscore form and there are many others which we will be looking at now so for example i can guide you on these methods quickly so g underscore form dot add option so this function is used to add options to the drop down values on your form so for example if you want to add any new category dynamically on the form using onload client script or any type of client script you can use this particular function then the next method is called clear messages so the messages which are showing on the top if you want to remove them you can use the clear message method and those messages would be removed then we have enable or disable attachments so as the name suggests you want to remove the icon from the form here the attachment icon you can disable the attachment or maybe vice versa well i'll quickly show you this one so disable attachments and i will save this quickly so right now you see there is an icon to add your attachments here i will refresh this i will click on ok and you can see the icon is now not available i will go down here again i'll type g underscore form the next important function which is used usually is get reference so this is used to get the reference values from some other table so for example if you want to get reference value from the assignment group so if you want to jump to some other value for example if you want to get the manager or maybe the group email then you use get reference method however service now doesn't suggest using this get reference instead of this you should use glide ajax because that is more efficient after this we'll be looking at couple of more options like get table name so you can get the table name of the current form which you are on so for example we are on incident table so it will show me the incident table name and the next one would be is mandatory so it is used to check if a field on the form is mandatory or not so you can use this function to check that as well is new record is when you are trying to create a new record on the form you can use this function to check whether you are on an existing record or a new record next one is show error box this one is quite interesting so if you want to show an error on some specific field you can use this function so here we have to give the name of the field for example we will give the name of the field as assignment underscore group and then i will give the message here 
assignment group error box i will save this and i will refresh the form here and it should show me the error on this assignment group field i'll click on ok and here you can see this error on the specific field so using add error message you can display it on the top but if you want to show it on some specific field you can use show error box we will look at one other function called hide error box so if you want to remove that error which was showing up you can use this function called hide error box so if you see there are tons of functions which are available i would encourage you to explore all of them but i have given you a detailed explanation of all the functions which are mostly used in service now projects and are mostly asked during the interviews so if you have any questions on these methods or any of the functions which are not discussed in this video please let me know in the comments i will be really happy to answer all of them finally we will look at a use case where we will try to write a client script to set the value of subcategory as email when the category is selected as software so as soon as the user selects category as software the subcategory should change to email we will go ahead and write a new client script for this and before that what i will do is i will disable this script so we don't see all those messages i will update this and i will type here client scripts again and i will click on new i will give the name as g underscore form use case select the table as incident again and i will use the type of script as on change so we are not using on load client script this time we are using on change and here we will have to select a field name now which would be category and now i will write my script here and i will give an if condition here if we will have to get the value of the category field so for that i would say g underscore form dot get value and then i will pass the backend name of the category field which is category and then i will compare it with software so the backend name of the software choice is software in these small letters we will quickly verify those as well to look at the backend name of the software option we will right click on the category we will click on configured dictionary i will scroll down to the choices and here we would see the backend name is software so i am comparing with the backend name and on change of the category field if, if somebody selects software i will set the value of subcategory field so i will again use g underscore form dot set value and then i will give the backend name of subcategory field that is subcategory and here i would set the value as email so for that i will have to again go to the subcategory options and look at the backend name of the email option so i will click on configure dictionary and if i scroll down i would see the backend name is email i will go back here and i will set that as email and i will save this script and now the script is saved and let me try to change the value of this category to software and you can see immediately it changed to email and when i select something else maybe hardware it disappears and if i select again the email comes up so this is a use case where g underscore form is mainly used which i have seen from my experience and this comes in very handy when you are trying to modify the values or maybe set values or make the values as mandatory non-mandatory visible or invisible you can use ui policies to do that as well but if you require scripting to check some conditions which are not available in ui policy you can use client scripts i hope this video was helpful to you please let me know in comments if you have any questions on the methods which were discussed and which were not discussed as well and please do subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button and let me know in comments if you want me to make videos on some other topics which you think are more important or which I haven't covered in any of the existing videos. Thank you.